Good morning. Uh, this is a special meeting designed to hear from the candidates for the uh, <coughs> vacant position that will be left when Councilman Rice is elevated to the uh, office of mayor. And uh, uh, we staged this meeting for the purpose of trying to make sure that everybody gets a chance to speak to the council. You know, some council members are not accessible as others, and uh, we uh, want to make sure that each person who is interested gets a chance to speak. We are not having supporters of council candidates to speak. We are strictly having this for the candidates themselves. I don't see Mr. Tom Weeks. We should be here at the table with us. Uh, uh, and let the record show that present is uh, Mr. Cravel, Ms. Galley, Ms. Chow, Mr. Street, Ms. Sabanga, and Mr. Weeks. And uh, Mr. Benson, unfortunately, had to be in Olympia for a meeting, and Councilman Jane Nolan asked me to make a statement without any satire that uh, <laughs> That, that she uh, had a, a meeting with some legislators uh, on a matter she could not uh, skip, uh, but that she did not remember that at first when we set the meeting. So I, had, I didn't say any satire, and Councilman Nolan is excused, but she will come in if it, the meeting lasts long enough. Now, uh, the rules of the meeting are that each candidate will have three minutes, and I have urged them to tell the city council what they would like to do as a council member, because their resumes will tell us what their qualifications are, and I will tell you all that we have a fine bunch of uh, qualified candidates Therefore, uh, they do not need to waste a lot of their time telling us how qualified they are because we have it on the record and, uh, and the, the uh, resumes will be available in the um, no. uh, municipal library and the main library. Uh, the uh, appointment will not come until January 3rd. We will have the meeting January 2nd wherein the really elected, elected council members and city attorney and the mayor will be uh, installed. And uh, on January 3rd at 9.30 in the morning again, we will meet and start the process. And may the best woman or the best man win. You got it in the right order. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, the uh, clerk is Miss Karen Winston and uh, we will have her read off the names, and as you read off the name, you will come to the microphone there and have three minutes to tell us why you are the best candidate. Ms. Winston. Okay, we'll start by reading off the names of the first three individuals on the list. Number one is Eugene Peterson. Number two, Susan McDonaldson, or excuse me, Susan Donaldson. Number three, Al Noel. Mr. Peterson. <clears throat> Good morning. I uh, brought some copies of my remarks and I'd like to read them when I leave for you for you to uh, attention. Good morning, President Smith and council members. Thank you for the opportunity to declare my candidacy for appointment to the Seattle City Council. After consulting with friends and advisors, I've decided to make my intentions publicly known. Furthermore, I believe I possess the knowledge, qualifications, and experience to make an immediate positive contribution to the work of the council and the city I've come to love people. This is an exciting time to be a part of city government. With a new mayor and new faces on the council, I sense a time of both challenge and change. What the mayor and the council do in the next few years will determine our collective future for years to come. Now that's what I'd call exciting. <laughs> Now, I know you're all thinking what kind of legislator Eugene Peterson made. Well, the first thing I want to stress is my history of being a team player. President Smith once said, and I quote, on the council, five votes is policy. I interpret that statement to mean that any council initiative takes teamwork to develop and teamwork to implement. As a member of the council, 
I would seek the advice of my colleagues and work to set an agenda that moves our city forward. I'll also bring a blend of experience to the council that includes employment stints in the public and private sector. Good public policy involves balancing the need for strong private economic initiatives with the concern that human needs are adequately protected and met. My experiences in the public and private sectors will help me ensure that the public interest is protected when the council acts. My knowledge of the city and its diverse communities will make me an effective member of the council. Through years of service on numerous citizen task forces, boards, and commissions, I've developed an understanding of and appreciation for citizen involvement in public policy formation. I've been on the other side, so to speak, and therefore will always actively seek citizen involvement, and I underscore, before major council initiatives are shaped. This isn't just good government, it's good old fashioned common sense. Finally, my years of experience as an active participant in state and local politics has taught me that politics is the art of the possible. Simply, I know how to work with others to get things done. I've learned how to agree to disagree and still maintain friendships. This is the kind of working knowledge a deliberative body like the city council requires. I possess this knowledge and the skills to put it successfully to work. What would my focus be as a council member? Well, realistically, none of you are, nor can I be all things to all people. My specific interest is in initiatives that would impact youth and education, volunteerism, especially where seniors are involved, and economic development that enhances the vitality of our neighborhoods. We are losing our children to the twin evils of gangs and drugs. As a city council member, I would work to break this cycle of pain. Seniors are our most underutilized resource. Ways can and should be found to positively involve seniors in solving our city's problems. <clears throat> and we must work to ensure that neighborhood concerns become an integral part of our economic plan for the city. Economic development and neighborhood values can and must be intertwined. Thank you for your Thank time you. and attention. You think so? Let the record show Mr. Cropper has joined us. Okay. Twice. <laughs> Thank you. Next. Susan Donaldson. Thank you, the council. I am Susan Donaldson. I would like to be appointed to this council for three reasons. First, is Seattle is my home. Second, I have knowledge about children and family issues. Third, I have professional expertise in utility and public works law. Seattle is my home. I was valedictorian of Roosevelt High School in 1971. Today, my husband and I live with our three children in the north end of Seattle, where we both grew up. My knowledge of children and family issues comes in part from my work as a trustee of the Children's Home Society of Washington, the oldest nonprofit, non-sectarian child welfare agency in the state, with a budget of about five and a half million dollars. As a trustee, I have learned several things. First, the dramatic effects of the shrinking public dollar on services for children and their families. Reductions in revenues has re meant a reduction in programs. I've worked as a trustee to make sure that the cuts were fair and equitable. As you know, reducing budgets is not easy or a fun job. Second, I've learned about the role of governing boards, how to formulate policy, how to evaluate administration, and how to keep the two separate. Third, serving on the Gallon Commission, a blue ribbon task force charged with reviewing the agency, I looked at agency administration throughout the state and was instrumental in recommending dramatic changes in structure to the agency, which were, which were adopted by the Board of Trustees. As an attorney practicing in public works law, I am familiar with laws and cases regarding issues such as bid mistake, lowest and responsible bidder, bid protest, minority and women's business certification and status, the selection of contractors and service providers. I have participated in negotiating settlements of bid and construction disputes in court, in arbitration, and mediation. I enjoy representing public dollars and finding the most cost-effective way to resolve disputes. I'd rather see public construction dollars spent on bricks and mortar, which taxpayers can see, rather than on invisible attorney's fees. Along the way, I've learned a lot about how public agencies function and how the applicable laws work. These same laws 
and their counterparts affect not only municipal construction, but also transportation, housing, and the many areas affected by population growth, such as garbage and waste management. I would welcome the opportunity to bring my expertise in construction law and public contracting and my concern for the children of this city to the council. Thank you. Al No. President Smith, ladies and gentlemen of the City Council, I'm Al Knoll, lifelong resident of the city and training coordinator for our fire department. Seattle in its second century is awakening to its destiny. Seattle is maturing to a position of leadership in the great Pacific Rim. Seattle is a destination of the young, the old, the rich, the poor, the pioneers of development in the coming years. Seattle offers hope to those who flee the problems of other American urban areas. Seattle's beauty offers solace to the beggar and the nouveau rich alike. Seattle is unique, and Seattle requires unique leadership. <laughs> leadership has no fear of innovation and daring. Leadership which can tame the plague of poverty and crime. Leadership which can overcome the threat of fiscal crisis. Leadership which will bring and fulfill the dreams of our children and theirs in turn. Leadership which will weld our diverse population into a unity of hope. I ask your trust and confidence. I ask you to pass to me the burdens incumbent upon a member of your group. I ask that my energy and tenacity be directed toward creating the city of the future, our home, Seattle. Thank you. Okay, the next three individuals, Nick Licata, Stella Ortega, followed by Sherry Harris. My name is Nick Licata, and I'm a candidate for the council's vacant seat. I want to thank Council President Sam Smith and the rest of the council members for mm -hmm. allowing all the candidates to address you in a public manner. This is the type of innovation that I would like to continue to see the council uh, maintain if I am on the council. Seattle is fortunate in having a large number of qualified candidates applying for this vacancy. Of course, there are some cost savings to a three-minute campaign probably about $100,000 for a successful one. But I believe that while each of the candidates here offers some unique skill or some experience, I can bring a combination of both which would serve the council best. The person you select should have a track record of working with government, working with diverse interest groups, and being knowledgeable on public policy issues. I have that kind of track record. I've worked with the city, the county, the state, and the federal government not as an employee or a public official, but at times as a consultant or a citizen advocate. As a citizen, I've successfully lobbied all of the levels of government in passing legislation dealing with such matters as Energy 1990, economic diversification, redlining practices, and housing issues. And I've worked with diverse groups in dealing with government. I've helped create one of Seattle's first neighborhood public development authorities for the purpose of rehabilitating single-family housing. I'd like to continue working on the housing issue and introducing issues such as uh, land trusts. I'm currently president of the land trust, and I think there's a future there for maintaining and retaining affordable housing in the city. I've helped negotiate land use agreements between neighborhood groups and developers. And in my present capacity as an insurance broker, businesses often seek my advice in looking at government contracts that they have to negotiate. I would like to create a bridge between the interests of community groups and the needs of the businesses. Through these activities and others, I have a track record in helping shape public policy over the past 15 years. Ten years ago, over 1,000 people contributed to my city council campaign. I lost that election, but like yourselves, I've never lost my concern for making Seattle a better place to live. In politics, Faces change, but the issues are always the same. Back in 1967, Councilmember Sam Smith talked about the problem of drugs in the central area. In 1975, Councilmember Paul Crabble said, 
keeping our neighborhoods as a place to live is the city's biggest challenge. And in 1979, Council Member Dolores Sabanga said housing, especially emergency housing, is the city's most critical issue. All these conditions are still with us, not because we haven't tried solving them, but because they will always be with us as manifestations of our changing society. I'll continue to work on them, and I hope that with your approval, I can work with you as a fellow council member. And if so, you can count on me to provide that needed fifth vote for your particular interest. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Stella Ortega. Who is Stella's husband here? I don't remember you saying that. Me llamo Stella Ortega. Director of Pull the mic closer to you, please. Okay. Me llamo Estela Ortega. I'm Director of Community Services at El Centro de la Raza. Honorable Sam Smith, distinguished members of the Council, Seattle citizens, good morning. I feel privileged to be here with you, with you this morning because I know that I am a part of a very important decision. We have many issues, social ills facing our city. We have a high dropout rate. We have drug problems, we have crime problems, just to name a few. Added to that, we have problems um, that create uh, tough questions for us around growth and housing and uh, questions about us slowly destroying the environment. Um, I am not overwhelmed by those problems. I don't feel scared of those problems. I'm not confused about those problems. I feel privileged to be living in this time because I feel that we have the technology, we have the resources, and we have leadership that has the will to be able to solve those problems. What we do need is more creative uh, methods to be able to integrate all sectors of the community so that they can also help provide solutions to these problems. An example of that is the war on drugs in terms of having um, mass community support to be able to begin to chip away at that. I have 20 years of working experience in the different minority communities in uh, organized labor, unorganized labor, the church, um, grassroots organizing, and I feel that I will add that diversity that will make the uh, council more representative. I think if you look at my resume and you look at the uh, sampling of letters that have been coming on my behalf, you will see that, um, that I have the backing of those different sectors. Many of you are familiar with me because of my visible leadership role uh, in human services. I will bring that experience and strength to the council. One of the lessons that I've learned in uh, human services over the last years is that human services cuts across all lines and is intertwined with many of the uh, issues that we're facing today. Let's take growth for an example. The questions of, of how can uh, growth not displace low-income housing? How are we going to ensure that growth um, pay our people livable wages in terms of the jobs that are developed? Uh, how are we going to ensure that we can steer growth to the, the economically depressed neighborhoods such as the Rainier Valley and uh, the central area, to name a few? Ma those kind of decisions are going to require a, a vision of integrating the community right. in those decisions. I care just as much about the north end as I do the south end, the east, and the west uh, sides. Over the years, I've learned to build consensus. I've learned to listen. I'm an approachable person. I've also learned to lead and also follow when necessary. I want to bring a vision for a better Seattle, um, for economic equity and justice for all people. Thank you very much. OK, Sherry Harris, followed by Roy De La Cruz, Walter Hubbard, and Juan Brocanagra. <laughs> you can push it up. Oh. Thank you for this opportunity to join you on the hot seat of local government. As someone who has had to watch the tough votes, the long hours, and the thankless tasks that you all do, one would think that I would know better. This job is no Christmas Amen. present. <laughs> However, my name for the record is Sherry Harris, and I'd like for you to save a seat for me. I'd like to thank the chair 
for opening up this process to the press and to the public and allowing them to have an inside seat on the appointment process. To those of us who have put in the countless hours of community service with little corresponding name recognition, it helps to level the playing field for all of us who want the opportunity to help lead Seattle into the 20th century. I have had a lifelong commitment to leave this world better than I found it. To accomplish this, I have sought to bring equity to those still lagging behind the curve of common justice. I believe in breaking down the stereotypes that some prefer to carve into neat little budget units. I know what I'm talking about when it comes to stereotypes. I'm a black woman from Newark, New Jersey, whose chances of graduating from college, much less becoming an engineer, were pretty slim. When it comes to understanding the dilemmas of kids from neighborhoods less advantaged than others, I know from whence I came, and I will never forget it. My goal here in Seattle has been to pay my dues in less stereotypical ways than what you might expect. I have cut my teeth and my hands on rebuilding the city's neighborhood core. I live in Maple Leaf. I've done the dirty work of getting involved from the ground up from planting trees in traffic circles to fighting for mass transit, from working for increased cooperation between businesses and homeowners to working for housing for all of Seattle's neighbors. Today, you don't need to belong to any organization to be a bona fide neighborhood worker. In fact, belonging to some neighborhood groups may well stand in the way of getting your agenda accomplished. I belong to a new generation of those who see a problem, put an ad hoc committee together, then get busy understanding the process to bring about change. My way is not so original. Many of you sitting on that side of the table began this very way. My experience and interests have always included the public safety. As former chair of the Seattle Women's Commission, I have dealt with the problems, the traumas of fair housing, equal opportunity, and police sensitivity in working with community interests. In preparing for today, I tried to think of what possible glimpse of myself I might give you in these three minutes that might make you really sit up and take notice. I decided to tell you what I would look for in a new colleague. I, want, I would want a person who would work as well behind the scenes with staff and council members as well as in the public eye. I would want a person who represented an expertise not already counted among the eight of you who will vote in January. I would look for a person self-confident enough to be able to accept hardworking assignments which might not have a corresponding limelight. I would want a candidate from North Seattle where the major growth and development battlegrounds of the 1990s will be. I would want a person the press would have to get to know. I would, want, I would not want a predictable vote for any special interests. I would want an honest, straight-talking leader who knows how to learn from listening. And I would want a humble person. I am many of these things. In conclusion, if you're looking for a candidate who will be all things to all people, that's not me. If you would want someone with a whole new agenda who would break the rules and forge a brand new council agenda, look for another. And if you want someone who will be a predictable stereotype on all the issues, I'm not your candidate. I am the candidate who wants this job to be able to represent something that is not now represented on this council something that is not that has not ever been represented i appreciate your saving that seat for me thank you roy de la cruz i have handouts for the uh, council my name is roy de la cruz i live in the great neighborhood of magnolia you can lift the mic up please thank you several years ago there was a national election. I remember one of the parties was saying that their candidate had a cool head. And the other party was saying 
that their candidate had a good heart. I feel that I have both those qualities. For 21 years and six months, I served in a position of leadership in a large public service organization. I served in management positions working with people from diverse backgrounds. I served this country proudly, wearing the Air Force uniform. I served in Vietnam, did a remote tour in Korea, was stationed in Europe, and finished my career on top by being selected the Logistics Officer of the Year for the Strategic Air Command and leading my squadron to winning the best supply squadron in the entire, entire United States Air Force. As a supply officer and a commander, I was involved in making policy decisions. I was involved in prioritizing needs and goals. I was involved in managing and allocating resources, materiel, money, and people. Throughout my military career and wherever I went, I got involved in the community, from raising funds for an orphanage in Korea to organizing, sponsoring, and establishing a special relationship between the people of my unit and the folks who needed some care and attention in a convalescent home for the age in Spokane. Since my retirement, I jumped right in and sent, set to find out what was going on around me. I was elected second vice president at the Magnolia Community Club, and I'm playing an active leadership role in the Filipino American community. I came from a family of doers. I have a young 69-year-old mother who was Washington State Mother of the Year in 1973. She's the president of the Filipino American Society in Magnolia, and she is the president of the Senior Citizens International Drop-In Center in the International District. My father, who I considered as a hero, survived the Bataan Death March and was the Washington State Veteran of the Year in 1980. And my wife was recognized as an outstanding educator in 1989. I have three children who are achievers, honor students, and one of them is a, an ex-AA, all-star, all-metro running back, and the youngest, a spelling bee contest winner at his, his school. Fifth graders beating up the, the sixth and the seventh and the eighth. Damn on. <laughs> Honorable Sam Smith, members of the council, ladies and gentlemen, I served this country for 21 years, and now I want to serve the people of this city. I want to join the team that meets issues head on. As I stated before, I believe I have two key qualities to be a member of the city council a cool head, and a good heart. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a happy holidays. Mm -hmm. Walter Hubbard. Councilman Smith and members of the council, our newly elected members. My name is Walter Hubbard. And about 10 days ago, I sent a letter to Councilman Smith in indicating my intent to uh, be a candidate today. I did this on the basis of my 25 years of uh, involvement here in the city of Seattle, starting with organized labor as a labor representative, and later on at Project Caritas, which was an educational program in the central city of Seattle serving children from K through 12. Later on, I moved on to the Human Rights Commission for the state of Washington, and just completed nine years in the criminal justice system as a member of the Board of Prison Terms and Parole. In between that time, I served as chair of the Model Cities Advisory Council and had the opportunity to uh, help develop some of the programs that many of you members uh, are now trying to administer and further. In thinking about the future growth of Seattle and what I think we are facing in the 1990s as, as we face the third millennium, I think we have many things that this council newly elected members and the incumbents have to face. Transportation, education, health, housing, homelessness, hunger, and waste management, just to name a few. But I know the new members and the incumbents will be addressing in 1990. So I felt that from a policy and administrative level, 
I would bring something to the council and work collectively with the members here. I've had uh, a good seasoned concept of citizen participation, and uh, I feel that, in effect, I could be certainly a collective member of the council to help for the future growth of our city. However, I must say to you, as of yesterday evening, my thoughts began to change in a sense, and as Councilman Smith announced about the candidates this morning, I thought maybe in its wisdom the council may be thinking of a caretaker person to fill his spot. If that is the thinking of the council in the future, I would say that Walter Hubbard would be a prime candidate. On the other side, I've come to want to support someone who will be speaking to you this morning, and that's Senator George Fleming. I've had the opportunity to work with George Fleming for the last 20 years, and I want to say to the council, I may be a candidate in the future, but I would like to express my support for Senator Fleming this morning. He comes from the 37th District, and I think he brings legislative experience and would be a well-rounded member of the council in the future of the 1990s. Thank you. Juan Bocanegra, followed by Barbara Henson. Stenson. Excuse me, Barbara Stenson. <laughs> Robert Wilmot and Regina Tyner. Good morning. Mr. President, members of the council, council members elect and guests, I would like to thank you for this opportunity to address you regarding my candidacy for the city council position to be vacated by mayor-elect Norm Rice. As has been stated by council member Sam Smith, that this is a new approach to allow a more public review of potential candidates. I hope that this few words may help in this very difficult decision. My name is Juan Jose Bocanegra, and I reside at 5422 31st Avenue South. I am presently employed as the acting executive director of the Downtown Human Services Council. I have been a resident of Seattle for 17 years and have been involved in many civil, human, labor, educational, neighborhood, and racial issues at the local, state, and national levels. I have worked in organizing and empowering people in differing neighborhoods, empowering people to participate in issues ranging from immigration rights to neighborhood development. As a result of my genuine interest in encouraging a progressive populist approach to governance, I have researched issues in depth and become well-versed in order to develop and disseminate information to people interested in participating in these issues. Again, as Councilperson Smith has been quoted in saying, that the person under consideration should be one who is familiar with the issues that the council deals with ongoingly. This familiarity is needed to hit the ground running. In all this, I fit the description. I was instrumental in bringing together the Seattle Citizen Summit, which brought a diverse group of people together to deal with municipal issues. A citywide agenda was developed and presented for review in meeting with city council members. This agenda was accepted by the council thanks to the leadership of Council Member Smith. We had a number of resolutions emerging from the summit from which we have seen great results. Some of these were the Citizens Alternative Plan, the 2.5 million for housing, prioritizing the major municipal projects, and support for the Office of Neighborhoods. Other areas that I have worked in which I feel give me the qualifications to participate in this council are my planning and advocacy experience in alcoholism, mental health, low-income housing and land use, and issues of poverty in general, work and civil rights issues. One thing I would like to add that the council should take into consideration in making their decision is the racial makeup of the city council. Chicanos, Mexicanos, Latinos are a growing number in our city. Statewide, it is the largest minority. The 1990 census will provide us with information that Latinos, Chicanos, Mexicanos far exceed the original labor availability numbers. It will also show an increase of over 38,000 new legalized Spanish-speaking immigrants statewide. I wish a large part of that number will end up in the major urban cities in Washington, Seattle. Our city is a growing place with room for participatory government. If our city is to provide a growing future for all, it must include Latinos, Mexicanos, Chicanos. As a Chicano, my experience in my community have been numerous. I was one of the founders of El Centro de la Raza and worked there for nine years. I developed the first Chicano Medical Health Clinic I developed the first statewide defense committee for immigrants and long, long time activist in many farm worker issues. I am a board member of Casa Chile and secretary of the Committee in Defense of Immigrant Rights. For this may mention reasons, 
I place my candidacy as one of your best alternatives, which would take into account the need for representation and experience needed in our city. Again, thank you for this opportunity, and I hope this information will assist you in making the important decisions which will affect many lives. Thank you very much. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here today. It would be an even greater pleasure to be here on a regular basis. I'm Barbara Stenson, and it's wonderful to see you all again. We've known each other for many years. And why I would like to be on the City Council is because I would like to work with you. I think one of the biggest challenges we face in Seattle is building the political will, the coalitions to get things done in the 1990s. We've had a lot of divisions. We have people with honorable positions that oppose each other. We now need to take those ideas and put them together. Another reason why I would like to be on the City Council is emotional. I fell in love with Seattle when I was a little kid growing up in the Montlake neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons people make these sorts of decisions. They do them because they love it. This is a wonderful opportunity. It's a wonderful position to have. And yes, it's well paid and it takes a lot of money and resources to campaign for it, but it's a job worth doing at almost any price. One of the challenges I think we face in the next decade is making Seattle and continuing Seattle a good climate for small businesses to stay in business. I'm the owner and partner of a small business, a public relations practice in Pioneer Square. And I've seen a lot of challenges that these businesses that do generate most of the new jobs in our community. That's one of the things I'd like to accomplish working with you on the Seattle City Council. Coalition building, a good climate to work, a safe and constructive environment for our children. Those are big tasks ahead. I won't take all of the three minutes. I'm sure there are a lot of people who would like to speak for longer than three minutes, but it's a wonderful chance and I do intend to remain accountable to the public. If I were to be appointed, I would want them to vote on my performance in the fall election. Thank you very much. Bob Wilmot will be followed by Regina Tyner. This is Sam Smith, City Council. As you know, I didn't submit a resume. I think the City Council's very familiar with my resume. I ran for city councilman, as you may remember, four years ago. I pulled 18,674 votes. It wasn't a bad turnout for $30 in campaign expenses. So I do have some support out there. But I'm hearing these people talking, and the reason I went on this council is I do not believe that the poor and the homeless and the middle class have any representation in this city. I've been saying this for eight years, and you've heard me say it in the same mic for many times. And I think it's about time we open the council up to bring somebody else in that maybe is from the other side of the track. Somebody that knows what homelessness is, knows what it's like to go hungry, and who works with the shelters and works with the people on the street. And I do not think the city council at the present time and even with the two new members has any representation or any knowledge. We proved this during the campaign when three different people running all turned to me and said, Wilmot, what are we going to do about the homelessness? And this was done on TV. You people are supposed to know about it. It's over 12 to 20,000 of your people are on the streets today in this city and 3 million in the nation. And now I think it's time that the city council opens up to somebody besides upper middle class and the wealthy. We have to start listening to the rest of them. And we won't do it unless we have somebody on the council that is your conscience. And that's the one thing the city council doesn't want. Because every time a deal was made behind closed doors, I would make sure the public knew about it. I would let them know that there's 4,000 units being clean, closed up in this city in the next six months for renovation for the Winter Olympics, which is going to put 4,000 more people on the streets. We're filing a lawsuit tomorrow against two of the buildings that are doing it. And the city doesn't seem to be worrying about this. You're all a member of the, of the Metro, correct, as being on the council. But yet you have a major hotel with 400 residents that's going to be cleaned out this coming year to make the new headquarters for Metro. And they're going to dump 400 low-income people out in the streets. There is no place to move them to. So you can have a new headquarters for your metro headquarters. The Alps is being closed down. The Moor is turning around and renovating, getting ready for the Olympics. The Ohio is closing. Don't you people ever look at what's going on in the city? We constitute 10% of the city is homeless and poor. And we have no representation. I don't think this is right. And my suggestion is take, maybe not me, but get somebody from one of the uh, De La Paz 
any of the organizations have been working with the people. We need somebody on this council that represents the other 10% of our population, not the 90% with the money. We want to be represented, and I think that it's about time it was done. Thank you. Regina Tyner, followed by Earl Sedlick, Bob Hegeman, and Lynn Walker. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to come before you and express my desire to serve. It is an honor and a privilege to be part of such a large field of qualified candidates. I have two points to share. One, the background that I bring is both a life experience and a work experience. I came to Washington State from New York about 28 years ago as a young married mother, raised my children, came through the system. I have not forgotten my roots. As a single parent, some 13 years after marriage, I raised the children for 10 years. And I understand well the struggle to balance home and family and bring that life experience to this opportunity. The work experience that I bring speaks for itself. Some 20 years of both public and private management, notably the six years as the director of the Department of Licenses for the City of Seattle, the three years as the director, uh, assisting the director of the Department of Retirement Systems as the deputy in Olympia. The volunteer work that I balanced in both the Municipal League, the United Gospel Mission and their homeless program and others is part of the balance. Why I seek the position is simply two reasons. I believe in citizen action. And I also believe that there is a need, and I can bring to this council a solution to that need to bring an African American female perspective to the council decision making process. A perspective that is tempered with political savvy to be a team player, to know when to listen, and when to be serious, but not take yourself too seriously, to be armed with those 20 years of working experience, and to be encouraged with the knowledge of having lived the experience of the council, members, constituency, the citizens. It's an exciting time to be part of bringing in to the 21st century the needs and solutions together as a team and a partnership. If I have the opportunity, the four areas I'm interested in, the growth, as it is a monumental task before us, it's overwhelming our infrastructure and impeding our service delivery, economic development, we need so to provide small business sufficient access to capital to be able to get affordable rates for business development, and of course, dealing with the role of the family and dealing with crime and education. I stand ready and qualified to be a part of that process. And I thank you for the opportunity to share that. Earl Sedlick. <laughs> President Smith and members of the, of the council, I understand the pressure you f feel to satisfy the separate and often opposing needs we hear about from today. You cannot select just one special interest, but for Seattle's open seat, you can do the right thing and you can send the right signals. You can select a non-bureaucrat citizen of geographic, demographic, and political balance a frontline team player who's easy to work with and not blinded by a single issue focus. A vote for Earl Sedlick sends a positive signal to the North End, the Central Area, and the South End. I've had the honor of leading and serving throughout the city of Seattle. A vote for Earl Sedlick sends a proud signal about the ethnic di diversity in our city to black, Jewish, Asian, and Native Americans, Earl has been a leader and an effective helper. It sends a reassuring signal to the advocates of women's rights, nonprofit housing, historic preservation, transportation reform, land use sensitivity, neighborhood quality, 
Crime Prevention, Pioneer Square, and Pike Place Market Survivor, all issues that I've been involved in. Send a warm signal to the handicapped that a person who continually battles the lifelong and embarrassingly obvious affliction of stuttering will not be denied public position for which he so obviously qualifies. Beyond this peerless record of neighborhood leadership and volunteer achievement, I offer a unique opportunity to weave the fabric of this city. Because the vote for Earl Sedlick sends a needed and welcome signal to the business and downtown community. They know Earl to be a respected thought leader, a Harvard MBA author, a teacher, a hands-on manager who understands their concerns, yet who can see through their ploys and brings reality and financial knowledge to the challenges we all face. Now, after this parade is over, you face a tough decision. But remember, this is Seattle's seat. It's not a black seat, it's not a North End seat, it's not a woman's seat, it's not a special issue seat, it's not a Jewish seat, it's not another minority seat. It's a Seattle seat. And it's not a seat for rejected campaign losers. It's not a seat for politicians who have existing obligations obligations, certainly not for granting knighthood to bureaucrats and power brokers. Seriously, this is Seattle's seat. Send a signal to all the strands that weave this emerald city's cloth. Select a citizen of balance and competence. Do the right thing. Send the right signals. Send them Earl Sedlick. Bob Hageman. I wonder if he was speaking about me. Uh, <laughs> 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 <Go ahead. laughs> Mr. President, uh, members of the City Council and, and Council members elect. My name is Bob Hageman, and that reference, of course, was to the fact that I did run for the office of mayor of Seattle in this past election. Uh, I am a, an ex-city lighter. I worked there for 20 years and retired last year. I'm also the chair of the shareholders of Seattle. My interests are diverse, and they have involved such things as being a spokesman for the, uh, the uh, Seattle Center Coalition and trying to prevent the center from being torn down, uh, the location of the convention center over the freeway, uh, city light rates, and watchdogging and bird watching our bond issues that have been presented to the people. There are two things that I would like to do. First of all, a major concern of most of the people of Seattle is the lack of fiscal responsibility to them by our municipal government. The other part is the realignment and reassignment of the priorities that we have in the city. We have heard many, many comments and complaints about the way that our money is being spent. I have argued over the years that the money has been available, always has been in the city. It's just the way we use them. We just have not used that money effectively and efficiently, and we constantly have problems. We can take care of the homeless. We can take care of our crime problems. But we have to learn how to use our money. And that is what I think I can provide the people of the city of Seattle by being on the C Seattle City Council. Thank you very much. Lynn Walker, followed by Deborah Wilson Mobley, Barbara Landers, and, excuse me, Laners, and Ed Mayer. Honorable <laughs> President Sam Smith, honorable members of the council. 
I'm not sure three minutes is long enough to contend for a position that the press has already given to my friend and our Senator George Fleming. <laughs> but uh, let me give it a try. By choosing me, you can present to the city fresh and new leadership of capability and proven poten potential without regard to prior appointive or elective experience and without creating a vacancy in another elective office. My experience comes from the politics of ministry, where every church committee can and often does constitute a special interest group. It comes from the politics of higher education, where every professor often can and does constitute a special interest group. And my experience comes from years of intensive civic and political volunteerism, which my resume will show. George Bernard Shaw said, people are wise in proportion not only to their experience, but in proportion to their capacity for experience. I know that whoever is chosen for this position will have to do some hard homework to learn the details of the issues that face the city, no matter how much he or she might know about the general issues. I think that I have learned over the years how to achieve more with less time and energy. I am a quick study, and I think that's one of the things that suits me for this seat. I see service on the city council as a way for people of vision and dedication to refine the meaning of sacrificial public service. I want to extend the scope and deepen the impact of my commitment to the delivery of social and health services to people in our city. I want to see the city make better use of nonprofit corporations and learn more from those corporations, engage themselves in sacrificial public service about how to reach out without reaching down. I want to engage in study of the impact and meaning of issues of construction and land use, issues such as zoning codes, adequate parking, affordable housing for buyers and renters, the siting and impact of hospitals, schools, work release facilities, AIDS hospices, and businesses on the communities. Because these issues relate to every major issue that faces every neighborhood in our city. How we deal with these issues will determine to some great extent the effectiveness with which we deliver also social and health services to our citizens. Formulating predictable, trustworthy, and workable policies in these areas will require foresight, boldness, and imaginative leadership from the City Council, and I believe I can help. In articles about this vacancy, the press has identified me as founding president of a theological school, Northwest Theological Union, and co-chair of the Doug Jewett for Mayor campaign. This implies a question. Can I work with the new mayor? I can work with the new mayor as easily as I served on the finance committee of Jesse Weinberry. I can work with the new mayor as easily as I actively and financially supported George Fleming's race for lieutenant governor. I can work with the new mayor as easily as I worked on the grassroots committee with Jerry Ware and others of Mike Lowry's Senate campaign. Indeed, I can work with the new mayor as easily as I supported him in all his council races, in his 1985 race for mayor, in his 1988 race for Congress, and I can support and work with the new mayor as easily as our mutual friend, Dr. Hubert Locke, now chairs the mayor-elect's transition team and is one of my references for this vacancy. I believe that this is not only exciting time in the history of the life of Seattle,
but it's a valuable time. I know how to move into the future without excess baggage. I know how to ask the right questions because I believe asking the right questions contains the seeds of the answers to those questions. I know how to be a cooperative and supportive colleague in the council's efforts to work with the mayor and others to serve the city's best interests. I hope you will study my resume for details of my background. I hope that resume and letters from my supporters and phone calls from my supporters will convince you that I'm the right choice. I hope you will appoint me to this position and to that end. I hope we will talk again. Thank you very much. Tom Rasmussen. To the Honorable Sam Smith, President of the City Council, Honorable Council Members and Council Members Elect, my name is Deborah Wilson Mobley, residing at 924 Martin Luther King Jr. Way here in Seattle, and I am one of the early candidates for the seat vacated by Mayor-elect Mayor Norm Rice. I have met with you, I work with you, and, and a copy of my resume is before you. And on its merit, it, it denotes my qualifications for this position, this post. I have a, a BA in political science, and I did my master's in political science at the University of Chicago. I am a, a, a I have been a political candidate a political supporter of many of you and a lobbyist. But why Deborah Wilson Mobley for the position of city council member? My concerns are in the area of the environment, the environment that affects the residents of the city of Seattle and also the entire region. I'm, I want to be a problem solver, a spokesperson, and a tool for residents to get, to get problems solved. The environment for me, does not just mean the Environmental Management Committee that uh, Councilmember uh, Benson now chairs and that ca uh, Galley chairs and that Councilmember Benson worked on and that has, has risen to great feats with the help with, of Gary Zocker and Diana Gale, especially in the area of recycling. The environment to me means to have Seattle and the region to be a small, free, and accessible, a compassionate, but last but not least, a place where there is indeed hope for you. I have the dare, the drive, and the desire to correct problems for the betterment of the people, which includes calling for safe parks, handicap accessible facilities, relief for senior citizens and, and those on fixed incomes, fair employment practices, and also uh, to make that sure that there is affirmative action here in the city of Seattle. I thrive on getting information to the public and to help people accomplish things and get problems solved especially those that don't have the resources to do so. A lot of people don't have the time or the knowledge to, to get things done and accomplished here on the City Council. I, as a person and as, a, as an employee of the City Council, am definitely in the know and do have the desire and the drive. You can just ask the police chief or, one, or Sergeant Marquardt whether or not Deborah Wilson Mobley will, will confront him on problems that, that come about out in the area. In fact, my son's barber is one block away from where the drive-by shooting took place just this week. I ride the buses, I am a resident of the, of the central area, and I am a native Seattleite. I am not afraid to confront problems. As you know, that I in no way think that the, the, the vacant council seat, seat is a minority, to, holds a minority tag. Yes, I am an African-American female, one that the city council member, the city council has never had an African American female in its ranks. But I also am a native Seattleite, one who has traveled throughout the world and throughout the region. I am concerned with, this, with the, the problems of the citizens and I, I thrive on trying to make them get, getting them resolved. You, you would, it would be no secret or be no uh, uh, different thing to find me out in the North End, out at Roosevelt High School or in the area of Magnolia, meeting with the residents, nor would it be anything different to find me at a SESCO meeting in the South End, meeting with business owners and residents that are concerned and scared. The environment, yes, is important to me. The media has just said again and again that Seattle is one of the most livable places in the entire world. But when you have that, you have a bombardment of, of people coming to the city, more pollution, more crowded streets, staunch employment competitions, discrimination of sorts. But 
When council members leave this chamber and step off the 17th floor of the Pacific Building, they become regional council members. They become metro council members. Yes, I know Paul Tolliver, who is the director of Metro Tran Transit. I was there for the uh, selection of Richard Sanders, who is the executive director. I know Herman Sarkowski, who owns the building across the street, Herb Bridge. Uh, there are many others, uh, the Seattle Chamber, these people I work with, I also work with the Larry Gossett's. I know the people of the community. Again, I am a resident. I am a native. I have not forgotten. I cannot forget. But I also know what a council bill is. I also know what a resolution is. I also know what a comptroller file is. I, I would not come to you, and I guarantee that if I get the position on the city council, I would not have to ask the question, what do I do now? There has been legislation referred on a weekly basis to the city council. There is work that has to be done. I do not want to see the city council become like the city council of, of uh, Federal Way with a brand new city council and a brand new mayor and everybody's wondering who's on first and who's on second. This is no, uh, no sly on the new council members that have been chosen by the citizens of the city of Seattle. They are very capable. I'm sure they are very fast learners. But I also come with a very capable staff. I have made my selection of, of persons that I want to work with me, one who has worked for the cable network, one who works in North Seattle, one who works in municipal courts, one who also has some backups, one who works right now in the word processing unit of the city of Seattle, and one who's worked for Dolores Sabanga by the name of Ray. But I do not come with political baggage. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, do not come, I do not come with political baggage. I am ready to get the job done. And in closing, yes, I'll take the Public Safety Committee. I have the dare and the drive to do so. <laughs> Parks, I'll take it. Environmental management, I'll take it. Transportation, and yes, Jim Street, <laughs> I will even take land <laughs> Jim Street, <laughs> yes, Jim Street, I will even take the land use committee, provided that Mary Denzel and Martha Lester will be assigned to my <laughs> that I can learn the committee. I solicit your votes in all seriousness. I have been there for the issues. It has been my job and my privilege to work for you. I've been there with the issues. I've been there for the issues. I need five votes. Council Member Mobley should not be anything too difficult to obtain. Thank you very much. <laughs> Barbara Laners. Good morning, President Sam Smith, honorable members of the council. My name is Barbara Laners, and you've heard wonderful stories by wonderful people who are qualified. The only thing that I can say is my resume speaks for itself in terms of my academic and educational training. I am a lawyer by training, but if you're looking for someone whose life work and has demonstrated a commitment to change and the inclusion of the voiceless, in Seattle, I am that candidate. My work in the areas of promoting social change started when I was a student at the University of Washington and has thus far continued. I am aware of public safety issues by virtue of my position as an attorney who have been in the trenches in municipal court and uh, juvenile court, and I know the problems there and the kinds of changes that are needed there. I also am aware of the problems dealing with homelessness and hungerness based upon my commitment and involvement with programs at my church that deal with these very issues. My commitment to education and change is demonstrated by the fact that even with my private practice work schedule, I find time to teach a class at Zion Preparatory School and to deal with adult education at the Hardy Academy. If you are looking for a person with demonstrated commitment plus the expertise to promote change and the a willingness and ability to compromise and a person who has the ear of the community in terms of issues by virtue of the fact that I have a program called Community Potpourri, which is a community forum issues, issues program which airs Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on CARE-IZ. So I am on the cutting edge with knowledge of how the community feels about the various issues that affect it and the growth of Seattle. If you're looking for a person with community-based knowledge, awareness, plus the technical training and know-how to mesh with your technical training and know-how, then Barbara Lanus is your choice for City Council. Thank you. 
Ed Mayer, followed by Tom Rasmussen, Larry Gossett, and Phyllis Beaumonte. Does this work? Yep. My name is Ed Mayor, M-A-Y-O-R, if people want to spell it right. Okay. I should be the one who have the city council seat because I have the experience, strong, dynamic leadership, and I am sure I can represent Seattle to other cities around the world. There are three main issues I'd like to discuss besides the other committees, which if time permitted, I'll try to discuss. Three are housing and human services, public safety, public work. Housing and human services. From what I've experienced out there, I'm sure the council members, the old one, and the new members um, have seen me out there surveying the street. The housing, public housing that we have right now are drastically in need of renovation. People are living like animals out there because they do not have a place to stay, especially at this time of year. Closed housing, which it should be, it should have been opened up and constructed a long time ago. And if I can, I will try to build new low-income housing with public support. Public safety, when I try to go door to door, I'm sure Mr. Weeks has uh, seen, seen me out there. <coughs> that's, that's the safe side of the city. If we go to the Mr. Smith area, dirty, dirty streets, streets that needs to be constructed with Curb and gutter, sidewalk, that also goes to the public work. Uh, pub, the pub, public out there really are afraid of walking during the night. I'm sure you've heard a lot of uh, rapes and gang activities that needs to be fixed somewhere, somehow through the legislative procedures, which takes a long time, I'm sure. Any of you know, tougher drug laws, I'm sure you've heard of that. But we need the people out there, the public support, who really needs to deal with the problems because the police, more police and more money just cannot handle everything. We have other cities out there trying to coordinate their own Next. public people or officers to help with cities around the county. Transportation, I'm sure you, we've been to a lot of Metro Council meeting before. And I've talked to some uh, DOT, Department of Transportation within the federal government and the state government. They propose a lot of different ideas to me and as of what we have now, since we, I'm sure the budget cuts within the federal government and the transportation that we have, they would say that high capacity 
transportation, maybe HOV lanes, or maybe uh, people would be on uh, carpools would be a good idea. But 30 it's seconds. Oh, 30 seconds. <laughs> budget, I'm sure we need to have a balanced budget and surplus if you can. Education, the parents need to be out there, help the children. Environment, clean, air and water. <coughs> Finance and personnel. I'm sure Mr. Uh, guy right here has been complaining to me all <laughs> for several years now. I'm sure you know him. Uh, Excuse me, time is up. <laughs> In conclusion, <laughs> my goal is to have an efficient government within local, county, state, and federal, if I can, or people will let me do. Thank you and vote for the mayor. <laughs> Tom Rasmussen, Larry Gossett, followed by Phyllis Spomonte. Good morning. I'm Tom Rasmussen. The 1990s will be an exciting decade for Seattle and the Puget Sound region. These years will present us with significant challenges which must be met if we are to continue to have a working and thriving city. In recent elections, the public has said what it wants. Better public safety, better land use and transportation planning, and better education. There is great concern about the quality of human services. Seattle cares about providing for the homeless and the hungry. If the issues facing us are not addressed head on and solved, we may lose much of what we value. I share your concern for a smoothly operating city council, and I believe that I can work with you to solve the problems and the demands which are being made on the city. I believe that you have a mandate to take bold steps to make the 1990s one of the most dynamic and exciting decades in Seattle's history. I offer qualifications and experience which are not matched by any other candidate. I am thoroughly familiar with the issues of land use, transportation, <coughs> human resources, and parks. I know the city budget and the legislative process. I know how the city government works, and if appointed, I will hit the ground running. Experience at this time is critical because the issues are critical. This is going to be a decade of community activism, and we must be prepared to make the changes that the people are demanding. I have worked with every neighborhood in the city, from Maple Leaf to Fauntleroy, from Madison Park to Squire Park, from Beacon Hill to Columbia City. I have been elected to the Queen Anne Community Council eight times. I understand the challenges of living in a neighborhood with soaring land values, increasing traffic, and intense development. And I can help solve these problems which these issues raise. I am a person who can build bridges between constituencies, between neighborhoods and business, between the council and the neighborhoods, and between the businesses and the council. I am passionately committed to social justice, to equal rights for all people. I do not believe that any group has a claim to this seat or any other council seat. However, this vacancy is an opportunity to appoint an individual from a community that has never been a part of the city council. And I speak specifically of Native Americans, Hispanics, and the gay community. A few moments ago, I spoke of a mandate for bold leadership. This appointment will be watched closely as an indicator of the priorities and the direction of the city council. This is an opportunity to select the best for Seattle and to create a richly diverse council which can be the leader of the region. I ask you to appoint me to the city council so that together we may begin the work of the 1990s. Thank you very much. Larry Gossett. Mm -hmm. I have copies of my statement available for the council members. 
Uh, one of the first things that I would do if I were appointed by you all is to establish a vehicle for taking advantage of the tremendous energy and ideas represented by all of these fine candidates that have come before you. Uh, I think that as we look at the decade of the 90s, that we're going to have to try uh, new and different strategies for solving very pressing and challenging problems. As the chief legislative and public policy development body and city government, the city council will be a major player in maintaining the quality of life in our community, as well as addressing the myriad needs and problems of the people as we move into the decade of the 90s. As leaders, I think that we as council persons have to work closely with the mayor in establishing goals for the 90s. Let's look at our city and try to figure out where is it that we want to be in the year 2000. What should be the major goals uh, that we should establish to get us there? How, how can we work with, we should ask ourselves, how can we work with our citizens to uh, establish themes that will enable us to keep everybody's eyes focused on the primary prizes? If you look at my 22 years of political involvement, and leadership abilities as a problem solver here in Seattle, I think that you will find that I'm qualified to join you on the city council. Some of the problems that I see as pressing that we should develop goals around uh, when we began to look at our agenda for 1990 are as follows. Very upset this morning to pick up the paper and look at what's happening in our schools. The failure of the educational system to educate our children is uh, a devastating blight on our city. It's intolerable that the average African-American child reads and computes and writes at the 31 to 34 percentile when compared with all the youngsters throughout our nation. Seattle, we can do better. I have the experience of taking people with conflicting views and interests and getting them to come up with common goals, maybe not goals that represent the individual view or the individual interests of one uh, group compared to another, but goals that represent the best interests of the most people. And I think with that kind of skill, I could assist you as part of the city council team it's solving the major problems that face us. Another problem that we really have to look at, the dwindling supply of affordable housing. The price of housing in Seattle is rising faster in our community than any other in the nation. Somehow, we have to figure out ways to address the problem of maintaining affordable housing for our low and moderate income families. Another major challenge for the 90s, lack of meaningful jobs for African American and other minority youth. I would submit to you that the problem with drugs and crimes in our community has a lot to do with the sense of hope that our youth have and with the lack of opportunities they have in reality and they perceive that they have. I have a history of working with and inspiring and motivating the youth in our community and I would submit to you that we could figure out a way to work with our small business and big business community to get them to see the importance of investing in our youth. After all, after <clears throat> by the year 2000, half of the new interest in the labor force, force will be minorities. Finally, in conclusion, I think I kind of agree with um, Bob Wilmot. Uh, we have to figure out a, a way to judge our success by how well our policies impact what Reverend Samuel B. McKinney calls the last lost and least of us. I think that um, this can be done by creating um, a more powerful um, cooperation between community, city council, and business. If we do that, we can enrich the uh, democratic experience in this community. Larry Gossett has a history 
of making people sensitive and cognizant of the needs of the least, last, and the lost. Add him to your city council. Thank you. Phyllis Bomonti, followed by Linda Holliday, Tom Byers, and Nancy Long. Good morning. My name is Phyllis Bomonti, and I want to thank each one of you for enabling me to make the presentation this morning. To the Honorable Council President Sam Smith and to Council members. Idealistically, one might surmise that each appointed or elected council member should have extensive experience and knowledge regarding council committee assignments and the issues related to them. But realistically, each council member, I believe, brings professionalism, a particular focus emphasis, and a general proficiency as it relates to the myriad of issues that fall within the various committee assignments. I believe I have that professionalism, the expertise, and that proficiency. My commitment to the public began prior to 1975 when I began to prepare myself for a career in public service. My academic background includes a master's degree in public administration, a Bachelor of Arts degree with a double major, political science and editorial journalism, and Washington State teaching certification. My graduate thesis was a major analysis of regionalism in Washington State. I am an English teacher as well as a social studies teacher here in the Seattle public school system. And I feel I also have the writing skills, which are also essential to this position. I am also familiar with city government. During and after my graduate studies, I did an internship with the Seattle City Council. This included researching issues, responding to constituency concerns, making evaluations, and writing recommendations regarding the mayor's proposed budget. I also felt it was essential for me to involve myself with people issues from the perspective of the citizen. I did this by devoting my time and energy to organizing and chairing political forums and functioning as its chairperson of social action for Mount Zion Baptist Church from 1973 to 1979, as well as chairperson for citizen action for Church Women United, the Seattle unit. Other civic involvements have included past member of the Municipal League Candidate Evaluation Committee, past member of the League of Women Voters, a member of the Washington State Women's Political Caucus, past Executive Secretary of Washington Association of Churches, and past board member of the Washington State United Nations Chapter. Because of my varied background, I feel I have a good understanding of the interrelationship of issues. This also enables me to be creative by offering innovative alternatives to problem solving and decision making. For example, I believe one innovative approach to reducing crime and the use of drugs by young people is through the teaching of goal setting, the teaching of values, and heritage indoctrinations. This can be implemented through a process within our educational system. As a high school teacher, I have had the opportunity to teach American government and economics, in addition to political science to college students at Pacific Lutheran University. In summary, as a city council member, I would bring to you the appropriate academic credentials the knowledge of the organizational structure of city government, knowledge of the functions of the city council and its relationship to other levels of government, administrative experience, innovative and creative solutions to problems and issues, and a broad understanding of issues from both the city and the citizens' perspective. And finally, Seattle is a cosmopolitan city. Therefore, I believe one must be sensitive and aware of the diverse constituency this city reflects, the person selected 
or elected to the city council must be deeply committed to the well-being of all humankind. I have that commitment, and I am particularly interested in those who have their backs up against the wall, like the homeless and the young people who have not completed the appropriate education in order to function as citizens in our society. I thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Linda Holliday. President Smith, council members, I'm standing here before you today with my heart in my hand. I don't think I can tell you just how afraid I am. This position is so important. You see, I live in the central area, and there are crack houses and drug dens all around me. I live in the central area where I-90 has cut off access to the businesses and the stores that are so necessary to keep a community vital. I work in an environment where technology is advancing so rapidly that by the time it hits the market, it's already obsolete. I work in an environment where systems are automated and roboticized to the point that they don't need people. Corporations are downsizing. Banks are declaring bankruptcy. I am concerned about the quality of education. I'm a mother of three-year-old twins, and I'm going to have to make a decision as to whether or not I want my children to go through a system that already has placed them at risk. I'm concerned about balancing growth and the needs of the human services and the taxes that are necessary to support the infrastructure on those kinds of issues. <coughs> I'm an individual. I'm a concerned citizen. And at any one time, you can look at me and I will wear several hats because I have needs in all these areas. I have a deep appreciation for leadership because that's when you have to take the issues that are so tough and you have to come up with the solution that is as equitable as you could possibly make it. I got my background in labor and I fought on the union floors, the things that I valued. I've negotiated, I've mediated, I've counseled, I've listened. And there's times I've cried. I am deeply honored to be in the field of these qualified candidates that have come before you today and that will come after me. But I have an, a stake in this city. I invest in this city just like I invest in my home. And I would have liked to have come up with some new ideas, but people have already said them. I'd like to come to you with new concerns, but they've already been said. So in closing, how I would like you to remember me. I care. I'm here. I'll be here tomorrow. Because my children, your children, your grandchildren, and all the people that live here, are depending on you for the kind of leadership that's necessary to take us through another century. I thank you very much. Tom Byers. Mr. President, members of the council, it's good to see you this morning. On January 2nd, our city government will undergo the most dramatic changes in 20 years, and we're facing new and tougher challenges. In that context, 
I think I offer some important strengths. First, I have a record of public service, both in the community and within government. I worked for seven years as the director of a community health center. I understand the chemistry of our neighborhoods because I've helped to build neighborhood organizations. That neighborhood perspective is something I share with many of the good candidates that are here this morning. The other part of my experience, however, is equally important. I know our government. I've worked with every city department, and I've chaired both the human services and the environmental sub-cabinets. I've negotiated agreements with other governments and testified before, or for the city before the state legislature and the Congress of the United States. I would still have a lot to learn from each of you, but I think my past experience would enable me to learn very quickly. My second strength is a record of creativity. I am proud to have played a part in creating the Seattle Conservation Corps, the Cedar River Watershed Policies, the City Light Trust Fund for low-income people, in adapting parks programs to the needs of single-parent families, in developing the open space bond issue. I want to continue to offer ideas and energy to this city. <coughs> My third strength is the ability to work well with people of different backgrounds. I've been forming coalitions and building coalitions in this city since 1971, when we organized the coalition that saved the Seattle Public Health Service Hospital. In the mid-70s, I helped to organize white and black, Asian, Indian, and Hispanic health care organizations in a single coalition. I helped to create the Mayor's Task Force on the Homeless and the Task Force on AIDS. And most recently, I worked on the summit that created a plan for the resurgence of Pioneer Square. Mr. President, I believe very strongly that this council and our new mayor have a great opportunity to forge a new coalition in this city a coalition of those who are concerned about growth, those who want to maintain a strong economy, and those who are concerned about the poor and the homeless. Our city's economy is now so strong that employers are becoming desperate for skilled workers. They're advertising out of state, and each time they do that, it means more MUP boards go up in Fremont, more houses are built on the Sammamish Plateau, and more cars on I-90. And the great irony in that is that those new workers will commute to their jobs by driving right through the heart of neighborhoods where thousands of people remain locked out of our economy. I want to work with you to change that. I want to build a new coalition that will maintain our strong economy and control growth by investing in the lives of the people that are already here in our city. Seattle has a great opportunity to shape a different and a better future than is possible in any other city in America. I want to join you in that effort because I believe it is critical to the future of the city I love. Thank you very much. Nancy Long, followed by Jan Drago and George Fleming. Thank you, Council President Smith, for this opportunity to address all of you in a public forum. Each of us here today sees this appointment as a real opportunity, a chance to influence the future of the city, a chance to make a personal contribution. But it's a real opportunity for each of you as well. Just as you can't whistle a symphony, each of you depends on one another to be effective with your own goals. I believe that this opportunity to select your ninth member is a chance for you to bring someone to the council that will help enhance the effectiveness of the council as a whole. I want to be that ninth member. I am well qualified for this position. I have a master's in public administration. I spent many years in policy analysis, planning, and administration in a large public organization. I must have put a zillion hours into the political process. And I've had experience as a community activist working with city bureaucracies that often seem hostile and unintelligible. I also think that I bring, in addition to this, these uh, special skills, a perspective and a style that will contribute to the effectiveness of the council. I spent several years as a single parent on limited income derived from my own business. That experience has been a valuable one in giving me a perspective on, on public policies. Single parents and their kids are among the most unempowered groups in our society. And their issues are much broader than human services. They include recreation programs, 
the educational system in our community, utility costs, the lack of affordable housing, and the need for safe and stable neighborhoods. I would describe my personal style as a passion for quality, a penchant for humor, a respect for directness, and a dedication to getting good results. I've worked with each of you to preserve the Wallingford Police and Fire Station, to establish policies for health and human services, to declare Seattle a city of sanctuary, to establish an office of planning for human services. Most significantly, I worked with you to set, change a city policy so that we would fund human services with local tax dollars, creating the survival services plan. I gained great respect for the council during that work. I watched your process, I participated in your retreats, I attended the hours of budget hearings. I know that this is not glorious work. Most of it is not the stuff of headlines. But I know that I have gained respect for the process and for you as individuals. And I would bring that respect to the table. I think that's important because we're going to have to have the trust built out of that respect to face the issues that loom before us. We have to prepare for the likelihood that the times will not always be as prosperous as we are enjoying now. The council, with the help of its excellent staff, has to take charge of tomorrow. That's a tall task, but it's the real job before us. To do that, to take care of tomorrow, requires that we develop some new tools. We have to uh, deal with our increasingly pressured urban environment. And the tools of the past simply are not going to work for us. There's a quote that speaks to this responsibility. And it says that we are not simply passing on a legacy to our children. What we are doing is borrowing their future. My daughter Ellie's here today. And every opportunity that we squander, every resource that we squander, we take from her future. I think that we can exercise the insight, the courage, and the innovation if we work well together as a council, as a municipality, and as a community. And I'd like to contribute my skills to that process. I appreciate the time that each of you has given me, and I respectfully ask for your vote. Thank you. Jan Drago. Good morning. My name is Jan Drago. Over the past three years, I've Would had opportunity. What? Closer? Is that better? I didn't know. Okay. Over the past three years, I've had opportunity to give testimony before King County Council, state legislative committees, and as many of you know, numerous times here in this chamber, presenting testimony <coughs> on public safety issues and as an advocate for the homeless. Today I'm here on my own behalf to talk about my experiences and qualifications and to ask for your vote for the appointment to the vacancy on this city council. Over the past 25 years, I've been actively involved as a volunteer in public service. Today, I'm a Seattle small business owner. During the 70s, I was an educator, teaching Head Start in a low-income minority neighborhood. My public service was devoted to education, parks, and recreation. I chaired a parks and recreation commission in a rapidly growing suburban city. I learned the critical importance of early childhood education, safe parks, and preserving open space in keeping a city vital. I've been passionately involved in the critical social issues of our city, eliminating homelessness, creating affordable housing, mobilizing communities to fight drugs and gangs, making our streets safe again, and empowering neighborhoods. Through my involvement in 10 community organizations from the Mayor's Homeless Task Force to the First Avenue Association, I've played an active, unifying role in bringing together large and small businesses, neighborhoods, and human services. I am proud of the accomplishments which these coalitions have helped to produce, including the Omnibus Drug Act, the State Housing Trust Fund, and ADATSA. 
Through all of these experiences, I've learned the critical importance of bringing diverse people and groups together to work toward a shared goal. I've learned how to develop partnerships between people and government. City government has the greatest opportunity to convene and facilitate partnerships. I believe that the solutions to the problems of the 90s rest squarely on the city's ability to convene and facilitate partnerships. For example, in low-income affordable housing arena, the partnership must include housing advocates, property owners, developers, and bankers. The second Seattle summit in 1990, after education, must be a housing summit. Partnerships must also be created in the areas of growth, education, and public safety. My commitment to you as a colleague is as a working partner, working with you to develop the partnerships which will make Seattle a safe and livable city for all people. My commitment to the people of Seattle is to represent and serve all of the people. George Fleming. Good morning. Mr. President, members of the council, and council-elect. My reason for being here this morning is to share with you why George Fleming would like to be the city councilman that fills the vacancy left by the election of Councilman Norm Rice to the mayor of Seattle. I'd like to be that council person because the 90s bring about great challenges. And I believe that the challenges in the 90s will be in the cities. And I believe the most important challenge will be right here in the city of Seattle. I have spent two thirds of my adult life representing the public, championing the issues of many of the people that have spoke to you, championing their issues for their individual communities or organizations. I believe in the 90s George Fleming can be most effective in the city of Seattle as a council person. The issues that face Seattle in the 90s are issues that bring about even more of a challenge. I've heard the members who ran for re-election. I've heard the members who ran for mayor. And I've heard the people and many of those issues are issues such as human services, including housing, the homeless, strengthening our neighborhoods, child care, drug and gang activities, criminal justice system, managing the growth and transportation of our growing areas, better climate for educating our young people, and making sure that the city employees are treated fairly and equitably. The potential of solving these problems is most exciting. And I believe one of the chores, and I hope you would believe so too, is that the city of Seattle will assemble the best policy makers and leaders that's possible. And I would like to be a part of that team. Why should you choose me, and what do I bring to the table? Well, I bring 21 years of legislative service. This is a legislative position. And many of the people that have talked to you today, they have great experience, very qu fine qualities, and good candidates. But this is a legislative position. And I do bring 21 years of legis legislative service. In bringing that legislative service, I believe it would help fill one of the gaps to make a complete team. I believe one of the things that we have to do is not only be able to communicate among each other and coalesce and bring each other to the table for a common cause, but we cannot solve our problems alone. 
We need the help of Olympia, and I believe I can fill that gap. We need the help of the federal government, and I believe that I can fill that gap because I've worked with every statewide elected official, every congressman, and both U.S. senators on a personal basis. I believe demonstrated leadership qualities and my ability to bring people together is one of my strengths. I believe the involvement of my leadership on budget matters, when I've worked with members of you here, when you were budget chairman, Councilman Simbanga, worked with you on economic development, international trade, worked with you, Councilman Smith, on city issues, community issues, worked with you, Councilman Crabble, on housing and the homeless. I believe that I've demonstrated that I know what the issues are. I've not only coalesced the people and communities out there, I've been able to, in a body of 147, get 50 people from fi different communities in different parts of the state to come together on an issue in the House, and 25 people in the Senate from different communities and backgrounds to come together in behalf of issues for the people of this state. And I believe, if I am appointed on the City Council, that I will have great pleasure of working with only nine members from the same city <laughs> and getting five votes to create a coalition. But I will work to make sure I get nine votes on every issue, and that means working not only internally, but externally. Mm -hmm. My private sector involvement, I think, will add to that. As community developer and economic developer, as small business developer, as international trade developer and tourism developer, I think I know what the issues are there. I've worked with many of those people out there that are trying to make Seattle even a better place to live. So in closing, Mr. Chairman and members of this August body, I believe the people have spoken this past election as to forming their new team to take on the 90s. And I believe on that team is a great group of people. And that team consists of some rookies, that team consists of some senior seasoned veterans. And I believe if we're going to take charge and if we're going to solve the problems of Seattle and move on as a better city, that as you go out to look for that person to fill that spot, when the 49ers are ready to go to the Super Bowl and they have a spot to fill, they don't just go out and fill that spot. They look for an impact player. They need that little edge to get over the top. I believe that an impact player is what's called for now, someone who can come in and immediately contribute. Yes, there are things that I will need to know, but I believe that I'm a quick study. I believe because of a past chairman of local government being on the municipal fleet, I believe the municipal council, I believe that George Fleming knows local government. I've worked with many of the mayors around Puget Sound, the counties. I think from a regionalism standpoint of view, George Fleming can be a part of that team. Thank you very much for allowing me to be here this morning to share your thoughts, why George Fleming would like to be a part of your team, and why he hoped that you will support him. I think the team is great. I want to be a part of that team. I respectfully request your support for the nomination of city council to, to, to the position that was vacated. Thank you very much. Um, I now know why that Seattle is one of the best cities to live in in the country, because no city ever had a better group of candidates for a single position who were all so well qualified. I congratulate each one of the candidates uh, who made a uh, presentation here. And now, my colleague, we have a most difficult job to do in the interim. And uh, like the ancient Greeks, we will need to repair to a closing place <laughs> and study and study and study and make a choice. Are we adjourned? Uh, 
Somebody indicates that there are other candidates. Well, the chair had no knowledge. But if there are other candidates, would they... If there are other candidates, will they please come to the microphone? But uh, I cannot retake what I've said. It's been a great day, almost a first that we had such a fine uh, presentation. But if there is another candidate, please come to the microphone. Good morning. Hey, I am indeed honored to have had my name submitted as a candidate. And your name is? My name is Millie Russell. Surprise. I do support George Fleming for this position because I recognize the importance of his expertise, his track record, his commitment, and the network that he brings to this council. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, my colleagues, if uh, you have nothing else to do, may we be adjourned. <laughs> if you have nothing else to do. <laughs> I wouldn't put them that way. <laughs>